My name is Joe McLeod. I work uh, with the kids uh, in the Native Child Welfare Program here in Nipissing First Nation. From my perspective as a knowledge holder, what knowledge is important that I would like to pass on to the next generation. Um, I'm not a very big knowledge keeper. Like I just work with kids um, and we do a lot of land-based uh, stuff um, uh, to help them. Uh, these are kids at risk. Um, so what I would like to pass on to the next generation is um, like, I don't have a whole bundle of teachings that, you know, I can give away or anything, but my job in the community is a Chicago as a helper um, is to help people. And if that, if I can give that value to the kids, you know, uh, if I can touch them in any way, it would be that it would be to, to make them enthusiastic about helping people, you know, in anything, you know, if, uh, and to watch out for our elders, you know, that's a big thing when there's, uh, you know, we're having events going on, you know, we watch for our elders and I'm constantly trying to give that to our kids. It's important um, to help. So if there's one thing that I can pass on, it would be that, uh, that along with the seven grandfather teachings, um, we're working a lot with that and um, these are great, great values uh, to have as a human being in general. Um, so those two things, well, it would be eight things, right? Because there's seven teachings and then the one helping. Um, but that's what I would like to, uh, if there was anything that I can help with. I talk to the kids lots um, about values. Um, because uh, I've grown kind of attached to them in, in a sense that, you know, they're, uh, they're like my kids, you know, I don't have kids, right? So I treat them as if, you know, not as if they're my own, but, you know, um, as if how I would give to my kids if I had kids, right? You know, so I'm constantly talking to them about, and I deal with boys, um, I deal with mostly boys, so I'm talking to them constantly about values, you know, about respect, about, uh, I've been talking to them a lot lately about sex, and it's a difficult uh, topic to talk about because I've never done that before, um, so it's kind of sensitive for some of them, but they trust me, and, you know, I, I lay it out, to, you know, in plain English to them that, you know, like, I'm going to be with you guys here for, you know, the, a lot of them are 13, 14 years old. So my age bracket is 13 to 24. And um, so I'm going to have them for another 10 years. So I've been telling them um, to be safe, you know, and if they do engage into that type of activity at, at the appropriate age um, to protect themselves, and to be careful and to be respectful towards women. Um, you know, those are very important things um, because, you know, I jokingly tell them I don't need them pushing a baby carriage down Garden Village Road, um, but it's important that, uh, you know, that they be aware of those things also. You know, all these things, I care about these kids and, uh, you know, and I want them to, to go in a good way. You know, I was, uh, I do stuff outside of program with them also. Uh, you know, we hang out sometimes, we go to the movies and all that, but um, I talk to them a lot. You know, I reach out to them and I try to connect with them and keep that connection there uh, steady as uh, as our relationship goes on in life. Um, these are, are brand new friends to me. You know, they're, they're people, they're human beings and they're our future. So they're very important and it means a lot to me um, that that I steer them and do my job. You know, it's it's outside of work too, you know, it's just not... Um, it's not just at work, you know, it's, <clears throat> my heart's in this, in this community and, uh, and, and I give it to these kids. So I like the land-based as aspect of my job, you know, uh, I'm not a pro, uh, hunter or fisher, but, uh, all of these things that I do with the kids, uh, you know, we go in the bush, we went moose hunting this year, we, we went fishing, 
we went ice fishing. We, you know, we did, uh, we set snares. Uh, we set a beaver trap. We caught a beaver. All of these things are ways of our people. And, um, and there's a, there is a connection there, you know, that, uh, I didn't have for a long time. You know, I, I was, uh, I was born and raised as, uh, uh, non-cultural, you know, my, my grandpa, parents raised me for the most part and and I was raised in the Catholic Church and I was told to speak French and I was told to not speak my language and I was told that all of these things that I'm doing uh, when I wanted to learn about uh, powwow I wanted to learn about sweat lodge I wanted to learn about these things that I'm connected to naturally I wanted to learn about those things but I was told by my family that um, those things they're not going to help in any way so there was a, a portion of my life that I just shunned everything, uh, all of these cultural things, all of these things that make me me, all of these um, pieces of my identity. You know, I shunned that for a long time, thinking that that was right, you know, thinking that um, that was my, uh, and believing that that was my journey. And, and I was wrong, you know, it was, uh, but that was my, what they knew. You know, that was what my grandparents knew and they did their best, but it wasn't until, uh, you know, a few years ago, um, that I started working at the culture center and grabbed onto that again, you know, and who I was, um, all these cultural pieces and, and land-based teachings and, you know, just jumping in head first. And, uh, and I didn't know anything, you know, and I still have lots to learn, but, um, that part, that missing piece of my life is back in there again, you know, so I feel fulfilled in the sense that, um, <clears throat> I'm whole again, like I'm a whole person without these teachings, without our way, without our culture, without our language, without uh, you know, hunting in the bush and, and fishing in the lake and maintaining that balance too, you know, like, uh, for, you know, we don't want to, we don't want to overfish the lake. We don't want to, uh, kill all the animals in the bush, but <clears throat> all of that is who we are. And I'm able to embrace that again today. So, which brings a lot of gratitude in my life. And it fulfills me spiritually and emotionally. And it's, it's the most wonderful feeling in the world. I wish I could just share it with everybody. Uh, but um, these, our way is just a beautiful, beautiful way uh, on how to live. And there's no textbook, you know, like there's no textbook that I have to read to go through and, and learn it. It's, it's there, you know, like it's, it's, it's in my heart. And, uh, so if, you know, I, I heard Tori Fisher say it, uh, when he brought our kids for a walk in the bush back here on a language hike. And he said, uh, you know, this was our classroom. And, and that was just really wonderful to hear him say that, you know, like, cause it was, you know, a long time ago it was, it was our classroom being in the bush and, and learning. You know, and that time of the season was springtime. And then we went through the seasons, you know. And all of these, everything about it is just beautiful. Like, you know, like, you talk about seasons, you know. We didn't have a calendar. We didn't have numbers on a calendar. We didn't have months of the year. We, it was times of the year, you know. And we understood that. And we prepared for them. And we lived them. And right now it's storytelling time, you know. And it's... Uh, and I'm learning, you know, I have lots to learn, you know, I don't know everything, but I'm grateful to, to be in this position, you know, and to, to be open to these teachings because they are our truths. And, uh, and I hope uh, the momentum keeps going with it because we've built a momentum here. If there's just one thing I could say about our kids here in Nipissing First Nation is that they're fearless and they're resilient and they won't let anything stand in front of them. You know, when I watch them, you know, 
with uh, anyone, you know, they build a sweat lodge. They go at it and you just, they're, they're not afraid uh, with anything. And we built a big lodge um, and they weren't afraid to do that. Just, you know, clean fish. You know, they get their hands dirty. And, you know, it's wonderful to just see them build not just structural things like sweat lodge or, 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 uh, or teaching lodges, but build themselves. You know, they're building themselves inside as Anishinaabe people. And, um, and the one component that uh, I really would love to just see in them one day is language. You know, uh, they come sometimes. You know, we provide transportation to language class uh, through Native Child Welfare where I work. And the kids are, are they're involved with sports and, and in school. So a lot of times they can't come. And, but it's a huge part of who we are. And, and it's just a wonderful thing to hear, you know, uh, is our language. So I hope, you know, I hope that they can get more involved in language. You know, our Anishinaabe language is very, very special and it's beautiful. I would like to see more, more land-based stuff in, in, uh, in our education. You know, uh, I have a buddy who's working up north. Uh, his name, I won't use his name, but he's a good friend of mine. And he used to teach at Scholard Hall, uh, St. Joseph Scholard Hall. And he's working up there and, it, and half their day is land-based and the other half is in the classroom. So it's, it's just, it's really, really, uh, really wonderful. If we can implement that, you know, here, that would be awesome. Um, you know, along with language, along with, uh, along, and ceremony too. You know, we have to incorporate ceremony in our way. You know, that's our church. You know, I believe, that's my belief, that, it, that that's our church. That's where I get spiritually fed, is in ceremony, you know. In, uh, when we're smoking the pipe, when we're in lodge, when we're in sweat lodge, when we're in circle, when we're in talking circle, any type of circle, you know, when we're sharing and, uh, and when we're eating, um, you know, the, the, that's important. And I think that ceremony should be implemented in, in education as well. So hopefully within the next 10 years, you know, we can, we can work towards that. Um, uh, right now, we have we seem to work pretty good together in administration. Uh, we formed some teams in there, and uh, and things are successful in that sense. And uh, and that's what I would like to see.